We're going to be talking about Gardens of Time with a modified program because we are here in the rain. And uh, as we get started, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are um, at the Santa Cruz Mission State Historic Park, which sits upon the land of the Awaswa speaking people of the Weepi tribe, who were the original stewards of this region. I acknowledge the indigenous people of the past and the present, and I appreciate this opportunity to teach, to work, to steward, and to interpret on their traditional homelands. I see people are joining in. Welcome to Gardens of Time. It's still drizzling outside, and so I don't want to uh, put the equipment out in the rain. We are going to take this small park which has a, a beautiful courtyard, a patio, and a view of downtown Santa Cruz. And we're going to condense it and make it even smaller today. We're gonna to work on one garden and we're actually going to take a look at one plant and talk about how that one plant uh, operated in the lives of traditional um, culture for California Indian people. Here we go. Okay, the plant of the day is soap root, and I'm gonna switch the screen here and hone us in on the soap root plant. I'm gonna hold this down, pull our legs in so we can get a close up look. And let's talk about this plant down here. So soap root would be growing um, across the landscape of central California and you're going to find it in slightly drier regions. It really likes disturbed soil and even today it's actually a pretty common plant um, that you'll see along hiking trails and places like that. And here we have it in our garden. It's been loving the rain. Let's take a close-up look at it. We have a couple of them here, a plant here and one here. And indicative of the soap root, you see these wavy leaves and they're really pretty. They spread out, but they're also doing something for the plant because when the rain comes as it, as it did today, the plant wants to take advantage of it. I can even see the little drip droplets of um, moisture that have accumulated inside the wavy leaf. And then the shape of the leaf is going to draw those droplets of water right to the center of the plant, right down into the soil so that it can take advantage of that um, moisture and nourishment. And this, uh, these couple of uh, soap root plants are in a great stage right now because I can see the stems with some, um, some uh, pods and some blooms. And they don't look like very much right now light colored, uh, whitish, bluish little petals. But when evening time comes, these uh, small blooms open up and they're incredibly fragrant. They're evening bloomers and they're actually pollinated by moths, those evening um, insects. So they're a real delight as the uh, evening comes. And um, we're getting ready to bloom right here. Let's take a look at a soap root plant that has been dug up because that's some of the exciting stuff that's happening on top of the soil. But a lot of the really interesting things about soap root are the things that are happening underneath the soil. I'm gonna turn and examine some of the stuff that we've laid out on this bench here. We're going to start out over here. All right, so here is a soap root that's been dug up and it was dug up a little while ago, um, some years ago, and in fact, it is said that you must leave the plant in the ground to grow for seven years before it's time to harvest it. And here's one that's done, been dug up. You can see that these leaves are already dry, but it shows us that bulb 
and it shows us some of the covering of this bulb. So many parts of the soap root plant are useful and have been used by traditional California cultures. Um, the center of the plant, that corm itself, that bulb, is uh, edible. And so it was often roasted in an underground oven when the Spanish arrived. It was a food that was often brought as a gift and the Spanish called it a mole. And so it's edible and you could take that same bulb and throw it into the stream and the saponin in the plant will gum up the gills of the fish, they'll float to the top and you have a fishing device right that right there. Soap root is called soap root because it has saponin in it and if you take that bulb, crunch it or crush it and lather it up with water, you have lather, you have soap bubbles and so this would be soap, be shampoo, um, used for cleaning. Now let's take a look at this outer skin. If you uh, pull up an onion, it's going to have a papery skin around the bulb. This one has a sort of papery skin. Let's move on a bit here. Take a look here. A papery skin, but also um, you can see where the paper turns into these fibers. And by rubbing or removing more of that papery uh, surface, you're going to get these long fibers. And that is going to be a useful uh, um, material as well. Let's move a little bit further and check out some of these fibers. So here is a, a handful of these soap root fibers that have been started to be pulled apart and then they can be gathered together. You can see the um, curved ends of them. It's nice to match those up and we're starting to get um, the sense of a, of a tool, of something that could be used. Let's, let's look at one of these tools. So right here, we have a soap root brush. And you can see how the end, the fibers have been cleaned. The fibers have been cleaned and prepared and aligned. And then they were tied together with some sinew or material and affixed with this um, handle. And this handle, I'll try it on the bench, is a really hard substance. And if you look at it, it's hard to figure out what is that made out of. Is it horn? Is it bone material? And the crazy answer is it's actually another part of the soap root plant. Because if you take the um, center of it, the bulb, and you boil it in water for a long time, it's going to turn into this gluey, uh, thick substance. And by um, uh, painting or placing layer after layer of that gluey substance, you're going to, it's going to form this hard shell and it's what's used for, in this case, your soap root brush handle. And so what's uh, been created here is a soap root brush. This one was made for us by um, Ohlone Descendants and gifted to this park and this particular brush has served as a really important teaching tool for so many school students over the years. We're really grateful that we have a soap root brush to share. Um, and the way this would be used in traditional culture is along with a sifting basket. You might prepare your acorn mush and uh, use a mortar and pestle to make it into flour, but you don't want lumps in your acorn flour and you don't want any bits of shell in there and so you would sift it and this brush would be for sifting through the um, acorn flour making sure that all the uh, fine grains grow th go through and the lumpy parts or the shell bits would be left on top to be removed. Acorn um, soap root brush for preparing acorn meal. And then just to bring the cycle around again, um, we have a number of these plants growing on our, in our gardens here at the Santa Cruz Mission State Historic Park. And I just wanted to show you some of the seeds that we've collected and um, can share, share to plant again here. 
or some people have taken some of these home to plant in their yards. So these seeds are pretty small. Let's see if I can bring them up close to the camera and get a good angle on them. The shape of them is kind of like kasha. It's a almost triangular shape to the seed. I'm close to the camera, twist them around so you can see there. And so um, once again, once you plant them, it might be a season before they uh, start to develop up on top of the ground, the leaf part, the leaf structure, and then you're wanting to wait seven years uh, before harvesting it. And that's just one plant that would be in our garden.